what's your relationship, for example, to streaming platforms and how much revenue you actually get from your streams? Very little. And like, they need to do a lot more. They need to pay a lot more. They clearly make a lot of money because of us. Is there... If you see the Daniel Egg, the Spotify CEO, no interview. No, I haven't. It's like one month ago, he said on an interview, it's not about they paying too little for artists, but it's actually that artists are just too lazy. That artists should like publish more albums per year, like three or four albums to make actually revenue in their platform. And it's not about them, but it's about artists being lazy. And, and it like, it, it raised like this epic shit storm. Oh, what a prick. <laughs> <laughs> he clearly hasn't got a clue, has he? No, no, like, sure. You can like, you can like fart three albums a year but what's the quality and yeah and the story and how how you're like he was talking about like sure like of course you need to release like this many albums albums because it keeps your fans like engaged to your music and i was like what fan wants to hear like three albums a year from their favorite artists mm -hmm. like nobody it's exhausting for artists and for the listener. Yeah, but also, like, if we had the capability to be writing three albums in a year, don't you think we'd be bloody doing it? Like, <laughs> it's not that we're like, oh no, I don't want to write three albums. If I could write three albums this year and have three years worth of work done in one year, of course I'd fucking do it. <laughs> it's not <laughs> that easy, like, <laughs> oh man, I, no, like, that's why I've started up my Bandcamp page again. Because like right. during yeah. all of this, I've realized that like you've got to be doing everything you possibly can for yourself and for your community and for your own music. And like Bandcamp is such a great place in that you can just put anything out. You can do stuff all the time. You can do one-offs, you can do limited stuff. Mm. And and you have entire control over the whole thing. And people and people that go on Bandcamp are real music lovers and they want to buy music and they want to hear new music. And yeah. yeah, it's just a good, like, you know, you, you kind of have to be on Spotify. It sucks, but it's, it is also a good tool to be discovered on. Yeah. That's the, that's the good thing about it. But then it's becoming less and less a good tool to discover on. because you, you have to be on like editorial playlists and Spotify has to like you and then they will put you on playlists. Whereas Bandcamp, people just click on, you know, folk music and then your album will just pop up and they won't know who you are and they'll give it a play and they'll be like, this is great. I'm going to follow this person and stream their songs. The way that algorithms work is that if, if things are immediately popular, then the algorithm thinks that more people want to see it. So they start showing it to more people. So if, tallest man on earth or ben howard or courtney marie andrews like somebody releases an album they've got a fan base already it's going to get an immediate uptake and the algorithm will realize that and think okay we'll push this because people want to see it it's obviously good but if you're like a new artist and you're trying to make trying to get your music out there you're not going to have that immediate uptake people are going to need to discover you organically yeah. And if it's purely algorithm based, then you've got no chance because it's just never going to have a, a spike and you're, you know. And I think there are a lot of people that think, you know, it's the same on all social platforms where, say, if you post a picture on Instagram or you post something on Spotify and it doesn't get that far, that because it hasn't had a whole load of streams or it hasn't had like 100, 200, 1,000 likes that it's not a good piece of work and it's not, it's just because the algorithm's a piece of shit and, yeah. <laughs> and like the work is good. It's just that they've got this algorithm in the way. So you just got to find other ways of 
showing it to people. Yeah, and now we kind of circle back to the social media. But what I feel with the like with the Spotify algorithms and social media, if you want to have that one big break in these environments, you have to kind of, from in my opinion, you have to act like a circus clown. You have to make something weird. Yeah to kind of get people's attention which is not like which is probably not something you want to do because you want to just impress people about with your music Mm -hmm. and i get that that it's really hard now nowadays because it's so easy to make music and so easy easy to publish music as an indie artist but some part of me wants to believe that that should be enough still that good music should have value yeah and it should and to the right people it still does that's the thing yeah. i think but because we all live semi in a virtual world now that we only see or a lot of the time we don't see those people that really love it and then yeah it's places like Bandcamp, live shows that you see that these people still exist and they, they are out there they're just not the people that are shouting on social media you know but yeah then, but then there's also like you said social media is a circus so you've got to just i think for your own sanity understand understand it and see it for what it is not get too wrapped up in it that it is just this crazy place and it's not the real world and that it it does have its place because like you know we've met through it effectively and yeah you know i've met so many people through it who i've then gone on to work with so it's like it's a great communication tool but you've just got to get through all the crap first to like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So now that this interview or chat took so fun and light-spirited <laughs> turn. <laughs> so, so for my last, last que- question, since we are in these happy wa- waters, uh, <laughs> Brexit, yay or nay? <laughs> oh, no. Hell no. Oh, for God's sake. You're going to have to do so much bleeping out in this video, but fuck Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to bleep anything. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, not at all, man. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm very lucky because I've, I've got an Irish passport, so I'll, I'll still uh, be yes. able to... I can come visit you with no problem. <laughs> and, like... Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay, but there's a lot of friends of mine that are potentially going to have to have a visa to tour in the UK, tour in Europe and stuff. So, but we don't know. We'll see what happens. Hey, man, it's always nice to talk to you. Yeah, you too. With man. You. <laughs> it's been so nice, and uh, take care and see each other later. Yeah, we'll see you later on, man. Thanks very much. Yeah.